Hi. Uh, good morning, all of you. Uh, is there any of my uh, panelists carrying a presentation or is just independent speeches? You, you have a presentation to make, sir? Okay, great. Uh, so, hi. I'll just uh, give a quick introduction about myself and then, you know, I'll allow my panelists to kind of, you know, introduce themselves and give uh, five to seven minutes of opening remarks. Uh, I am part of the sustainable investment banking team in Yes Bank. Uh, so essentially, I look at the equity, m &A, and the structured finance uh, division of renewable energy in Yes Bank. Uh, as you would be aware, Yes Bank is one of the leading financial institutions, uh, you know, in India, you know, who have a leadership position in funding renewable energy. Cumulatively, over our 12-year journey, we have now cumulatively funded around six gigawatts of renewable energy capacity. This includes around 2,500 megawatts of wind and already 3,500 megawatts of solar. We have been also at the forefront of financial innovation in the sector. We were the first ever Indian entity to do a green bond. Uh, we were also the first ever Indian entity to do a masala green bond. Um, at the, at the COP21 summit in 2015 in Paris, we have made a pledge that we will be mobilizing $5 billion of climate finance by 2020. And I'm happy to report that, you know, we'll possibly exceed that target, you know. Yeah. Ashish, you... Ashish, come. Come, Ashish. So, uh, let me, so, you know, uh, what we'll do is we'll try to make the session quite interactive. Uh, let me first, uh, I'll, I'll first ask all of my panelists to quickly introduce themselves and also introduce very, very specifically what their organizations have done, let's say, you know, wherever applicable, what, what all they have done globally and what exactly are they doing in India currently in terms of their current capacities, in terms of operational under construction and what is their, let's say, a three year kind of a horizon you know, or plan for India. So, you know, maybe we can start from Mr. Moon. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Sisir Moon. I am uh, currently working as the head of development in uh, FRB Power India. Um, I, let me first uh, give a brief introduction about myself and then I will talk about uh, FRB, my current company. I am an ex uh, NTPC uh, um, person. I was with NTPC for about 26 years. I joined them as a trainee and then I left. By the time I left, I was the head of uh, international cell in NTPC, uh, looking after various functions. And uh, in 2008, uh, I left NTPC. I went to the Middle East. I was with uh, in Saudi Arabia for about nine years, working for a power company there, uh, doing conventional gas-based and oil-based uh, IPP project. And for the last uh, couple of years, about three to four years, we were focusing in uh, renewable power projects in uh, Saudi. And uh, I was doing a couple of projects in Dubai, Jordan, Oman, Bahrain, and all these places we were pursuing. So I decided to come back to India end of last year, and then I joined FRB. FRB, as you know, is a Spanish company. It is uh, uh, one of the uh, pioneer in solar uh, about, it was set up about uh, in 2006, about 11 years back, and it started with uh, solar power projects in uh, Spain uh, under the feed-in tariff program, and then they had uh, they moved from Spain to US, and so they, they continue the solar business in US. Right now, we are a global uh, solar power developer. We are developing, uh, we have uh, experience of development of about two gigawatts of solar power project worldwide. We have a large portfolio in uh, Australia uh, and uh, in, of course, Europe and Australia. And uh, the, we had also a portfolio in US, which we, which we divested to other uh, investors. So in India, we came uh, here last year. Uh, we own uh, two projects under SECI, uh, uh, under competitive bidding. Uh, currently, we are doing two 50 megawatt projects in Andhra Pradesh in the Anantpura uh, Solar Park. So I will be talking more about that uh, during the course of uh, my next conversation. Uh, my experience in uh, developing solar power projects in India. So this is the brief introduction right now. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. And just to let you know, uh, again, you know, we had a pleasure of working with FRV in the past over the last two years since they have been in India. Once again, FRV also earlier used to be owned globally by a 
uh, private equity capital, Denham Capital, which have now been taken over by the ALJ, the Abdul Jamal Latif group of Saudi Arabia. So once again, a trend where we are saying that the initial platforms were funded by private equity, and later on the strategic investors come in. And we have again see that trend playing out in India as well in a couple of transactions. We have seen Green Infra kind of, you know, go to Semcorp, et cetera. So these kind of deals have happened. So I know that's another global example, you know, of that kind of transition happening. Uh, Pratyush? Yeah, good morning, everyone. I'm Pratyush Thakur. I'm heading operations for uh, Startcraft BLP Solar Solutions. It is a joint venture between Startcraft and Bharat Light and Power. Uh, Startcraft is a Norwegian utility, apparently the largest renewable energy generator in Europe. Uh, that's owing to a, a huge capacity of hydropower projects we own uh, in the north of Europe. Uh, globally, Startcraft has operations in 20 countries, owning more than 19,000 megawatts uh, of assets, uh, primarily hydro and, uh, and wind. In India, uh, Startcraft has uh, three, three companies. One is a hydro company, which is again under joint ventures, uh, which currently owns and operates 300 megawatts in Himachal. Uh, we have second company, which is a power trading company, which provides all kind of trading solutions. And uh, third is the one which we are in, and this was started late 2015. We have a very specific mandate of uh, providing solar solutions for commercial and industrial clients. So we are not in, in the market where we generate power and sell to utilities. Over that, we've, um, we've done a slow start, I would say, as compared to other people on this panel or other people in this country. Uh, we've uh, recently commissioned a five megawatt project in Karnataka. We've also commissioned a couple of small rooftop projects. We're right now developing uh, three rooftop projects and one ground mount project across India. And we're planning to develop between 40 and 100 megawatts of ground mount project in Karnataka this year. Uh, thank you, Pratyush. Uh, I think this is one food for point, and we'll ask Pratyush to later dwell on it exactly. You would understand, obviously, there is a two big segment. One is the utility, and then is the private PPA or the and the industrial and consumer, which also kind, kind of gets merged with, uh, you know, the rooftop segment. I think most large developers in the country today realize that both the segments are important. Uh, and at least this rooftop and consumer and private PPA market may not be large right now, but it's definitely too large a market opportunity to ignore. I think the biggest question today in the room is whether you sh it should be done in the same entity or whether it should be done in a separate entity, you know, as, as Pratyush represents a dedicated company. Because again, the kind of, you know, centralized approach or, you know, a limited kind of a team strength which works in a large utility scale solar really doesn't work on the rooftop or the industrial consumer size where the project sizes are much smaller. So I think that's another emerging kind of trend that we are seeing. The jury is still out whether you will see the large players doing it in-house or you, they will actually start shelving out separate entities only focusing on this segment. I'll, I'll, I'll get your thoughts on that more, you know, how the developers are kind of looking at it. Challenges? Uh, Ash, sorry, Ashish? Hello. So uh, I'm Ashish Agarwal. I am Chief Operating Officer for AMP Solar. AMP Solar is a Canada-based developer. We have developed close to 600 megawatts uh, globally across the world. We started in 2008 uh, with Canada. Then we moved on to UK. Uh, last year we started operations in uh, India, Japan and US. So we, we have done actually across segment from uh, big 50 megawatt utility project to a small uh, residential rooftop. So we have, uh, so in UK business where we have done more than 250 megawatt lot, a large chunk of that is into residential rooftop. Canada is essentially close to 100 megawatts, all uh, industrial and commercial rooftops. In India, currently we are doing a 15 megawatt uh, project in uh, Telangana. This is a utility scale project which we hope to commission in another 5-10 days, let's see how soon it happens. And apart from that, we are developing uh, a, a portfolio of c &I customers of broadly 60-70 megawatts in South of India. Thanks so much, Ashish. Uh, interestingly, so uh, as Ashish mentioned, AMP Solar belongs to Canada. So this is the second developer out of Canada that we have seen. And But just to let you all know, I, do, I don't know whether you are aware, today Canada, Canadian pension funds and Canadian institutional investors represent the single largest source of FDI which is coming into the Indian infrastructure sector as a whole and also a very significant portion towards renewable energy. So you have, you know, so you have seen Fairfax, CPPIB, CBPQ, Brookfield, 
all of them pumping large amounts of money into the Indian infrastructure field sector, finding them among the pension, you know, what we keep calling, you know, calling as a hunt for the low return investors or yield investors or long term investors. And I think Canada is clearly kind of leading the way right now. Hi, good morning. Uh, my name is Shalendra and I represent IBC Solar. IBC is a I think perhaps the oldest surviving solar company in the world. We have been in this business for the last 34 years. It's headquartered in Germany at a place called Bad Staffelstein. And uh, we have done around 3.3 gigawatt globally. Out of that, uh, roughly 60% is into rooftop and uh, balances ground mounted systems. Uh, we operate in almost 30 countries globally. And in Asia, we are active in Japan, India, and uh, countries like Vietnam. And uh, uh, we have, over the years, still continued to manage profitability in our business. And uh, till date, we have, we, have, uh, we have not leveraged ourselves. It's a zero debt company, even after 34 years of existence. As far as India is concerned, we have been in India since last three years. And uh, globally, we are a system integrator, and that has transformed into EPC business in India. We have completed around 57 megawatts of third-party EPC in India. We are doing O&M for out of 40 megawatts out of that. And uh, we started our own development last year. And currently, we have a confirmed pipeline of 80 megawatt projects spread between Karnataka and Odisha. Uh, I mean, to answer your question about next three years plan, uh, our ambitions are not too large given the landscape of the market. We would like to develop around 500 megawatts of assets in Asia, including Japan, Vietnam, and India. Uh, most probably India is going to have the major chunk of it, roughly between 220 to 250 megawatts. So I believe our ambitions are low right now, so, the down, so are the downsides. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, so again, uh, I, again, we, have, we had a pleasure of working with IBC Solar over the last couple of years. And once again, this re also represents one of the uh, other trends that we are seeing. Essentially, IBC, for the lo longest time in Europe, etc., in the global operation, has been an EPC player. But they have now also dwelled onto the development side. I think so what we are seeing is definitely on the pure EPC mark, uh, you know, on the pure EPC business, there is a margin compression which is happening. A lot of the large developers in India currently, because of the strong competitive pressures, are developing in-house EPC scheme, essentially doing what we call as EPCM, EPC management in-house. So therefore, what we have seen is there is a pressure on the kind of a pure play EPC players in terms of the margin and their scope of work. So it's two things are happening. The developers have started doing EPC, and therefore the EPCs have started doing you know, developers. Um, and interestingly, we have also therefore seen the same trend on the module manufacturers and the you know and the cell manufacturers point of view. And Vikas obviously represents Tina Solar and he represents this kind of you know the project development arm. Vikas. Hi, good morning all. So my name has already been shared. Uh, Trina Solar popularly it is known for its module manufacturing business, and even when I go to people, they always ask me about the module prices. But I am looking after the business of Trina, which is known as International System Business Unit, which uh, specifically deals with the development of solar farms and acquisitions. We have uh, already a very, very large portfolio around the world where we have developed uh, about 1.3 gigawatts. Most of them are in China. But there are three uh, regions which uh, this International System Business Unit is operating in. One is Japan and Southeast Asia, which is uh, handled by another regional head. Then the second is Europe and Latin America, where we have a team sitting in Zurich. And the third is for South Asia, which is specifically India and Sark nations. And I am leading that business. Uh, Trina, apart from its uh, module manufacturing, also has a lot many other pro uh, products like storage solutions, the structure, and many, many other items which, uh, which helps us in uh, becoming uh, a more stronger as compared to our competitors when it comes to the technology and technical know-how. Uh, in India and SARC nations, we have large plans, like any other, other big companies. You know, India is a large market. Everybody, everybody wants to do big in India. However, it is a difficult market. It's very competitive. 
and the uh, tariffs are a bit of a challenge for us and we are trying to find a solution for this puzzle. Uh, we already have a 49% stake in a 12.5 megawatt project which is uh, operational in Andhra Pradesh uh, and we are interested in doing very very large in India too, India and SARC nations. You know that it, Trina always works on large scale so if I say 500 megawatt and 1 gigawatt that really isn't something which uh, uh, we are interested in. We are, we are not running after numbers but if we find some good value in a particular segment then we will go after it uh, with full capacity. So there are no limits practically for us. We have money available, we have the technology, we have the team, everything is available. It's only the, uh, uh, the profitability and the value proposition. You know, we always believe in creating value rather than uh, achieving or chasing the numbers. So this is what is uh, Trina uh, development arm. Whenever you are asking questions, please excuse me uh, in asking anything related to modules. Yeah? I know everybody wants to know the Trina solar module prices. Uh, including all developers and EPC guys. So thank you very much. Uh, looking forward to have more interaction with you. Um, and finally, finally, uh, uh, you know, uh, out of the six developers we have, so we have five of foreign origin and we have one of Indian origin, uh, Island FS Energy. They were obviously the pioneers on the wind side. They've also done some work on the solar parks and also they have solar capacity. Uh, so maybe Pradeep, you can just give a quick introduction on what your plan overall renewable energy and also on solar. Yeah, good morning everybody. I am uh, Pradeep Chauhan. I work at LFS Energy. LFS Energy is uh, one of the group company of LFS Group, Infrastructure Leasing and Financial Services. So LFS is uh, uh, kind of uh, infrastructure group uh, founded by uh, major Indian financial institutions. Some of the global financial institutions are part of it. Uh, 25 years journey, we are into maritime, road, highways, uh, transportation, railways, energy, finance, education, environment. In recent years, we have been able to create the infrastructures which are uh, kind of uh, legacy to the country. Recently, you must have uh, seen there is a tunnel of nine kilometers which was inaugurated by Prime Minister himself in uh, Jammu Kashmir, which is Chennai National Chennai in Nashir uh, Tunnel. It's nine kilometer, Asia's largest uh, operating tunnel, all weather tunnel. So, kind of uh, infrastructures which we create as a group. At ILFS Energy, I'm heading solar projects. Uh, in solar, uh, we have uh, solar parks which are uh, which are in Rajasthan. You must have seen 500 megawatt recent Cheki uh, tender. We are into captive solar projects. We are uh, developing 100 megawatt project in Karnataka for uh, captive use for the end customers, which is kind of a very unique model in the country. On this particular model, we want to develop about two gigawatt of solar project in the next three years. We are into rooftop space on boot model, uh, almost three years now into Boat of uh, model, we have been successfully uh, implementing the projects. We are into uh, solar advisories to various state governments for framing of solar policies. Uh, now we are uh, kind of going into uh, wind, solar, and storage hybrid solar parks with uh, some of the state governments. Uh, as of now, we have been able to uh, work into various segment of energy. We have operational thermal plants uh, on uh, Indonesian coal-based uh, uh, projects. Then there are biomass, bagasse, uh, hydro. Uh, also, uh, we have been able to set up one gigawatt of uh, wind power capacity, which is uh, out of that uh, 750 megawatt is operational now. And uh, further we will be uh, working uh, aggressively towards storage into wind and uh, solar both. Uh, personally, I have been working into solar right from 2006 and seven from kilowatt stage to rooftop megawatt and now kind of gigawatt portfolios. So this is what uh, about uh, LFS and 
Great. Uh, thanks so much. Uh, okay. Uh, so let me now, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, we'll discuss some of the key issues which the sector is facing, and then I'll request all of you to kind of share their views. One obviously is the biggest concern that you know what we are seeing today, you know, is obviously on the low tariffs. And again, I, I think the Indian market is now, right now too big to be ignored by any international developer. So in that sense, yes, as you can see, five, you know, five out of six here are international developers who have committed capital. But what's also true is international developers also have global opportunities. And ultimately, apart from the volume, they will also look at profitability. So I don't know, I'll just ask all of my foreign, especially the foreign participants, you know, are they seeing pressures in front of their investment committees needing to just, you know, how do you justify kind of, you know, making future investment? Is there a significant concern on profitability? Or is it something which is business as usual and, you know, as, as leading developers, you will figure out a way to kind of make things work? Uh, maybe. Maybe Ashish, given that you have you have represented an Indian, you know, a green infra before and now AMP. If you can just scroll out, is, is this a discussion? Is this an area of concern when you talk to your headquarters? It's on the mind of everybody today. Most pertinent thing. Uh, let me try and uh, tell you a small kind of a recap or a story. So I started working in solar in 2010. And at that time, the tariff was 18 rupees a unit. And Gujarat was doling out PPS at 15 for 15 slash 5. But that was a very low tariff and IRRs were not working. But somehow we took a plunge and did it. Ultimately, when the project was completed, we realized that it's a gold mine. Then came the NSM phase 1. Everybody expected tariff to be somewhere around 15, 16 rupees in line with uh, Gujarat. And that was the same, almost the same time. But ultimately, tariffs went to 12 and a half to 8 rupees. We didn't participate, and we lost on the opportunity. Then was the next phase when people expected 10 rupees tariff and NSM yeah. 8 rupees. Aya. So this low tariff, every time, I haven't seen a phase where the tariffs were on the higher side. It was, they were always on the lower side. They, I haven't seen from 10 to 16, 17. There has been no year. Sun Edison bid was very bad. Her sky power bid was very bad. So all, all bids have been bad. And every time people skepticism says this is yes. the end of the sector, yes. these projects will not get built, yes. they will be default, and it's so far, at least so far, so far it has, so not, so far it has not been too It has not played out. Right. You know, so, and uh, and there are, the other question which is related to it is that how far the module prices would fall. So I myself used to act as an oracle and say some two years back at least that was 30 cent is technological <laughs> benchmark. Uske niche to technology will not allow to fall it. So all these stories, uh, it's very difficult to uh, crystal gauge what is going to happen. Uh, the only thing that I can think of is probably, yes, there is a pressure. Our ICs, everybody's ICs must be asking this question. How is this sustainable with GST coming? A lot of uh, issues are there. But I tell you, uh, we should always see that the kind of people who are participating. Number one, it is not driven by only uh, cheap foreign capital. There are domestic players also. There is all kind of players. There are people backed by private equity, active one something very recently, then you saw people from uh, uh, abroad coming up and winning our own developers, Acme has won it. So to think of people who have developed business of close to a gigawatt and uh, uh, they're going to aggressive and a basket of them going aggressive seems uh, difficult to me. So in solar, what has happened is that every time uh, there, uh, the tariffs have been broadly five to 10% lower than what is everybody's comfort zone. But that has uh, actually helped sector and brought down uh, cost significantly. I would say the only sector where subsidies has been utilized to, I say, the best of the use. See, what is subsidy for? Subsidy is for to bring in efficiencies. And that's what we have seen uh, in solar. The best uh, use any subsidy can be put in is that it bring in uh, efficiencies. That is what has happened in solar. So I hope uh, we'll see good returns. No, no. These projects also. Uh you know, and absolutely, the kind of players who are bidding, they are all responsible players. They have attracted good amount of capital. Uh, they enjoy the best of lending terms, yes. But, you know, again, there is a slight difference between the, let's say, the, the you know, the domestic players mm -hmm. and also the domestic private equity funded platform. Because those guys are committed to India, right? The, the money, the platform is committed to India. The players are committed to India. So they have no option. So even if this means that the hurdle, uh, you know, uh, equity IRR rate, earlier, let's say the internal equity rates used to be somewhere around 15, 16%, and today they have have to drop it by a couple of basis points so they will still do it because that is what their bread and butter is but for a foreign developer for a foreign company they all they always have options elsewhere in the world 
and yes uh, at least from our reading is that yes uh, you know be it you know be it the uh, uh, southeast asia uh, obviously the europe market is in a decline but southeast asia japan uh, you know some of the african countries these all these countries do offer much higher returns especially when you look at a dollar denominated kind of you know returns they showed so uh, prathush you are funded by two foreign players right uh, one norwegian one italian both have large global portfolios how do you how do you fight for capital for india Hello. Just a correction. We are just funded by Norwegians. The Italian one is a different joint venture that's owned by NL. Okay. So just a clarification. From my side, you know, if I talk to people in headquarters, Startcraft is a renewable energy company. So our mandate is anyways limited. It could be hydro, wind, or solar. Primarily, these are the large scale drive. Where is hydro today? Are there any opportunities to invest in hydro in India? There are no PPAs available. Uh, on merchant doesn't fly. Wind certainly is uh, is one of the options. Startcraft is building 1,200 megawatts of wind in Norway. Personally, I think it's a foolish decision when the prices in the in the European market are falling down to 15 euros a megawatt hour. Uh, in in Norway, anyways, Norway is much cheaper than than the rest of Europe because of a lot of hydro capacity. So in terms of IRR, India still offers better IRRs than some other markets. Now, the other markets which you said had more opportunity, uh, one of the ratings or one of the parameters which at least Startcraft evaluates when evaluating a country is the Transparency International uh, rating. Where do I, so India stands at number 67, it's pretty bad. But still, where is Brazil, Chile, whole South America is either worse or at the same level of India. Africa, don't even start there. Uh, Southeast Asia, of course, uh, South, uh, Southeast Asia is, is relevant, but uh, at least I'm not aware of the opportunities there. So India certainly is a place where there's a huge opportunity. But for Startcraft, uh, we have purposefully avoided the, the large scale market because at least we don't understand where the returns will come from. Um, others who are bidding may have better insights. Uh, Mr. Mund, you obviously now are part of a Saudi, uh, a Saudi-based group. You also have experience in the Middle East. How is the Middle East market shaping up? We all we keep hearing the record, the record low bid there also. But obviously the you know you know but obviously the maybe the solar radiation is much higher, and also obviously the interest rates are much much lower there. Uh, again, you know in FRV, how do, how are you comparing the kind of return that you are that you'll be able to get in India vis-a-vis -vis the Middle East market or the rest of the world? Yeah, I just uh, wanted to give you a background that, uh, in, uh, of course, uh, when we compare uh, India with Middle East, uh, you know, there are there are several differences. First of all, the PPA condition, if you see here and in Middle East, it is totally different. Here, there is no take or pay condition, okay? Or there is no deemed generation. In Middle East, it is a given thing that if there is a delay by the project authorities, then uh, even uh, in our case, uh, we are doing two projects right now. It's on a solar park. The, the government is, uh, the solar park authority is supposed to give us land in time, but still, uh, you know, uh, I have to do financial close in seven months time. It's already seven months passed and I'm still not, I don't have the land as yet. So this is the situation here in India. If you compare this with Middle East, obviously they, they strictly follow the contract condition. So if the PPA says that uh, this will be granted, this will be granted. If it says that the payment will be made in 30 days, it will be made in 30 days. So these are the certainty there. So in uh, there was a tender in Dubai uh, about, uh, I think, uh, six, uh, seven, eight months back, uh, where the tariff came out uh, to be 2.97 cents, OK? And FRB, our company is one of the bidder. We are the low bidder. Our consortium bid 2.97 US cents, which in Indian, uh, yeah, I think it will make it about two rupees or something. So when you are talking about uh, 2.44, probably we are talking about four US cents. So in in the Middle East, uh, obviously, of course, uh, the uh, lo low cost of capital is one of the major factor. But uh, these are also the PPA conditions, the client uh, behavior, the, the the stability in the market. So uh, we, we, in India, we need to develop some of these. Uh, 
you know, there are PPAs in India which are, you know, in some of the states are not being honored because of the low prices in other tenders, people are not buying the power now, okay. So these, these are uncertainties for a foreign developer which we need to factor into. When you are coming to India, we are, uh, we cannot, my investment committee asked me what is the guarantee that the power will be bought for 25 years. I say there is no surety. Today, of course, the PPA condition says that there is a 25 years PPA, but uh, tomorrow, whether the state will buy or not, that's the risk for us. We have to take that risk. If you are in this market, I have to take that risk. That is, that's all I can advise. In, uh, in uh, uh, India particularly, I feel that some of these, uh, uh, I think if somebody from ministry or somebody from SEKI is here, probably we need to improve a little on some of these things. These are, these are, not, uh, these are not big things, but whatever, particularly if, uh, you know, if, you are, if you are saying it is a solar park, at least make sure that the land is available, the connection, interconnection is, uh, you know, ready for the developer to do the work, okay. These are, th th this is the condition on which many of the players, when FRB came to India, we, we decided to focus on solar parks because there the land will be available, the interconnection is the solar parks authority responsibility. We thought our risk is limited to that extent that, okay, these are the two major factors which are taken care by the government. But if those are not taken care by the government, then it, it makes, uh, makes things difficult for the developer. Um, and uh, regarding the low prices, of course, uh, it doesn't uh, bother us. As I was telling you, you were in a bid which was 2.97 and subsequently there was another bid in Abu Dhabi which, which has gone to 2.65, okay. So the, the trend of low tariff is continuing and uh, the last tariff I think we are seeing is somewhere about 2.5 cents, okay. So this is the situation, thank you. Right. Uh, Sharada, I understand IBC on the development side. I think India is one of the very select markets that you are you are doing development. Most of the other markets do IPC. You know, again, uh, your views on how do you convince? 